on YouTube, D-Star back again with another tutorial. This time I'm making an FM squeal dubstep trap kind of cool drop sound. Actually a little out of the woodwork for me, um, but I'm, I'm just trying to use this to express some cool sounds and make shit. I came up with this uh, experimenting around with Serum and I think it's pretty cool. Check it out. It's kind of like that squeal sound that you've heard guys like Skrillex use and stuff like that. So, um, all right, let's get right into it. First things first you're going to need to know is that you need the wavetable. Um, the wavetable is key for this, um, and I will also give you guys the preset. Don't be a bum. Don't just put the preset on there. It's time to learn something. I'm just kidding. I sound like a teacher trying to get y'all to do your homework. Um, but yeah, the preset and the wavetable, the link is right below. Um, make sure you grab that. You could probably fit in other wavetables, but this one, you know, is going to get it exactly how you want it. Okay, cool. So let's start from scratch. If you don't know how to install the wavetable, you're going to go up to menu, you're going to go to show serum, show serum presets folder, and you're going to click um, tables in the folder, and you're going to drop in the wavetable into that folder. Easy enough. And then it's going to show up where you install it or where you put it. I put them in user for my own. You can make a little folder if you want, or just drop them in user, and it's called DSTAR Squeal. And uh, let's get it started. Um, the wavetable or the alpha position is going to be kind of like this and that's going to give us that on off sound and we're going to set it to 16th note and then we're going to hit trigger which means that when we start it it'll re-trigger at the start of the uh, LFO and we'll start with the level and you should get something like this. I'm playing a pretty low note on the keyboard by the way. Cool and then we're going to automate the wavetable position a little bit to get some motion now you got a bad dubstep bass. We're done. Just kidding. And then uh, we're going to detune it a little bit. And we're going to drop the random down to zero. And uh, like I said before, that makes sure that it's kind of like the retrig on silent. Everything starts at the same point. And I drop the phase all the way to the left, too. So those two knobs down all the way. Cool. That sounds pretty good. You should be somewhere in there. And then we're going to turn this on. We're going to turn the level down all the way. And we're going to bring it up three octaves. And I think that'll be good for now. I don't know if that's exactly it. We're going to use our ears. Like I said in the tutorial before, it's important to just use your ears and check what each adjustment does. Um, in this case, it doesn't do anything until we turn on the FM. From B. Cool. And let's modulate that. Starting to hear, starting to hear it now. There it is. Pretty similar. You don't even. It doesn't matter what octave that's in. It matters what octave you play the keyboard in. To be honest with you. Okay, cool. And that will be it for that. And uh, now you should, at this point, when your sound is on, you should kind of hear, for the most part, without involving the filter, you should be able to hear kind of the general tone of what you're going for. And for this, we're going to use the multi H. P, and this filter is pretty unique and it's awesome. It's a high pass with a uh, with this uh, peak built in, and it's pretty sweet. So this allows us to get kind of like that van reject we used in the tutorial before, but a little bit different because um, it's a it cuts as opposed to um, just a peak, if that makes sense. And then um, we're gonna turn this up here, and we're gonna draw that there and that's going to give us the sweep like that and what that's going to do is going to add some movement check it out pretty subtle takes out the lows and we're going to do the uh we're going to also do that in the resonance careful not to do too much and then we're also going to do this part too which will sweep the top cool and then we're going to hit it with a bunch of drive and then we're going to take the level, we're going to click mix, and you can turn it to level, a little secret, and then you can turn it down. Here how that adds kind of like that, it, adds, it makes it sound a little bit more aggressive with that movement. Cool. Next up, we're going to do the effects, and this is kind of where you polish the sound and get it to sound fuller and fatter. We're going to turn the hyper on, turn it down all the way. I'm going to turn this up all the way, or damn close, and then we're going to turn the room down a lot. Let's try like 10%. 
Cool, and that kind of spreads the sound out and gives it a room reverb effect and a little bit of a chorus effect. We're gonna turn the distortion on. And it actually turns this, the volume down a little bit, so when you A and B it, you kinda gotta take note. It doesn't really do a whole lot, but it adds a little bit, you know, something. It's, it's optional, I guess. But uh, I like to do it because it kind of gain, it takes the gain down a little bit too, which is nice and limits it a little bit. And then we're gonna turn this on multiband and we're gonna. All right, and as you can hear, that really makes it sound kind of harsh. And there's two ways that we can kind of tame it. One would be to automate the mix a little bit or modulate the mix a little bit, but we're actually gonna do a filter. We're gonna take the sharpest um, filter, 24 decibel, and drop it on there. Um, shift Alt or Shift Option, click to switch it back to that, to the One Direction style, maybe the envelope style, I guess you could call it. And we're gonna tame the highs. And this you're gonna have to use your ears on too. Too much and you get that kind of like plasticky sound. Too little and um, you know, or too little filtering and you're gonna get that, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> You'll lose the strength if it's down here, but you don't wanna keep the, uh, the kind of like that nastiness in there. So try to find that point where you're happy with it and you wanna have to adjust this in your final song to kind of see what cuts the mix, what works. And you might need to adjust the filter. Maybe something like that's cool for you. Maybe you want it a little cleaner. All right, whatever. Um, and you can also add a little bit of drive again. I like adding the drive a lot, to be honest. And we've got the principal sound right there. That's it. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, simple as that. Now you can go back and you can kind of adjust things a little bit and see to make sure you, you, know, you can't get it any cleaner. And um, you can kind of hear a little bit more now that you've got everything boosted and running through all the filters and everything, what every exact little tiny adjustment does. So let's go back and just move stuff around a little bit and see what everything does and how it can improve the sound or make it worse. I like that. That sounds good. So you're just moving it a little bit, dials it in to my taste a little bit better. Again, your taste may vary. Cool. I'm with that. Nothing too noticeable there. A little bit. It loses kind of the bass if I go like that high because the filter starts higher, which will cut out a lot of that low end. Which I'm not mad at. It's cool. I can keep it. No major difference there. I think I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, I think it's good the way it is. Um, so let's do the sub bass layer. There's two layers to the sound. Um, the other one's kind of a sub bass layer and I grouped them together here and kind of saturated them. You can compress them together, whatever. So here we go. Um, let's open up an audio effect. And we use EQ3. And we're gonna get rid of that. And then we're gonna pop open another serum. And this is kind of like the extra credit part. You don't necessarily, I didn't give you this preset um, in the thing. I don't think it's really necessary. It's just a base layer. But I'm going to show you how I would use it in a track if I was going to make something like this. Um, we'll do digital and we'll do uh, sub bass. And we're going to do the same or very close to um, kind of design on that. Trigger, 16th note. And this way it's going to follow. You can also duplicate. Um, but it's more work to delete everything than it is to do this. Cool. And then let's, uh, let's arm both tracks so you can hear both. Cool. And then if you want, you can group them together and you can, you know, kind of saturate them together. Cool, and that's it for today, guys. I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, leave a like, and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. I'm trying to do a video every day or two, um, as much as I have time for. Um, more content to come. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate the support.